Now in this video, we're going to get into how do we actually create the HTTP request in Thunkable. Now I, it gets a little confusing when you're trying to find the blocks and move them around and do all that. So I'm going to talk it through here, show you what the code looks like in Thunkable. And then uh, for some of you, you can just take that and run with it. For others, I'll show you how, where, how and where I find those blocks, but I'll do that in the next video. But let's start with how does this work in Thunkable? How do we translate that, that URL and make it into usable code in block code? Okay, so here is our URL. We broke that down earlier. And, and it's also important, not only do you know what comes in all these sections of this URL, but there's also a couple sections of an HTTP request I wanna talk about. Now, the first is the URL of our web request, right? That's this section right here. Right. This is the URL and our URL has our unique API key. The next thing it has is our data type. OK, now that actually in uh, in an HTTP request goes through the header. Right. So the header information is where you're going to learn about what type of data is being sent. Very similar to a website. A header data tells it about itself. Same thing uh, in this HTTP request. The next thing that happens here is this, this, this highlighted blue data. This is the data that we're going to send. Now in Thunkable, we're going to send this as a joined string, very similar to how we did the time date stamp and we cacophonated that. We're going to do that same thing here in Thunkable um, and, and I'll show you how. Okay. So let's just look at this first part, right? This first part where I said was the URL. Um, and then this that I said was the header. Now I've blocked the, out this end part. It's still there, still important, but this down here is actually the thunkable code for how you write this first part. So here we are, the web API, uh, the web API's URL. Here's the URL. And then we give it this URL. Okay. Now remember this number here is definitely going to be uh, your specific API key, okay? This isn't my API key. You wanna put in yours because you wanna be able to test it. And I will have changed my API keys by the time these videos hit the, hit the world. The second slot you see here is that we're setting the web API's headers. Remember I said this was header information. We're setting it to the, and we're creating an object. And we're saying this object has a content type of application forward slash JSON, right? That's telling it, we are going to send you JSON data. Okay, so this is literally the thunkable blocks that, uh, that take place for this part of this URL request. Okay, so just to remember, this is the bigger picture. We've done our URL, we've done our header, and that leaves us with the actual data that we're sending. Okay, so in the next slide, I show you how we send that. Now, if you remember, right, this was dynamic data. It wasn't static, we're not hard coding it. We're not just sending 72 and 127 each time. We actually want the data that the user is, is typing into those text boxes. And this is how we do that, okay? so. I've blocked this out just so you focus on this part because this is the code for how you send this part of the data. Okay, so very similar to how we did the time date stamp, we're gonna use the join block. And if you look here, we are using the same syntax, same information as here, we're using the join block. So uh, very much like we made a time date stamp uh, where we are going to join this data and send it on its way. Okay, so so at first it looks a little confusing. We have this gobbledygook. Now that is syntax um, of, of a coding language. Now in block code, we don't often get caught up in the in the curly brackets uh, and 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 square brackets and semicolons, but sometimes we do need to mimic it. And so if you look here, we are literally joining this first part, this curly bracket quotes data, end quote colon square bracket and that's exactly what you see here then what we see the what takes place of the curly brackets and all of our data that we send is this generating a json object 
Now, it's important to point out that while we don't type out all the curly brackets, they still exist inside our blocks. So this JSON, this generate JSON from object, it actually is handling this open bracket and this closed bracket, right? The, this, uh, let's see if I can do it, uh, from this open bracket all the way across to this first closed bracket is, is handled by this block. And then you'll see after that, we have a square, uh, a square bracket and a curly bracket, and that's what we have down here in our joint string. Now, um, at first, this is a little confusing. Maybe it makes sense to you. Just take my word for it, uh, if you must at this point. The other interesting part here is that we created this object with these fields. And if you look here, these are the names of my columns in my spreadsheet, right? And they correspond to the order and everything. So I have a low, a high, a date stamp, and notes. Now, instead, uh, and what I'm doing here is I'm saying the low, and basically this is, this comes from my, my text input box, the low text input box is text. The text of that is going to be in low. The text of the high is going to be in high. The variable of my time date that I created is going to be the time date stamp. And so this is how we dynamically send this user input information. We're not hard coding 72 and 127. We are basically making each of these columns as it gets sent in this, uh, in this object is going to equal the text that just gets sent, okay? Um, and that is, is the overview of how we begin to break this out, right? And I wanted to give you this so you could look at it and kind of understand conceptually where I'm going before I dive into the next video, where I'll show you how and where to find the code blocks in Thunkable to create an HTTP request.